What's up? What's up, bitches? Welcome back to another episode of Positively Uncensored, your favorite reality TV and interview podcast. It's your host, Leah. Couple of Thrupple fans. As you can see, we have two very special guests today. I'm so excited. Three, actually. OMG. <laughs> I'm so excited to be joined by Lauren, Dylan, and baby Lauren and Dylan, whose name I'm going to wait to plug because I want you guys to announce. But welcome. Thank you so Thank much, you. Leah. We're excited to be here. Yeah, we've been waiting for this. We can't wait to talk. <laughs> I feel super special because. You're 26 weeks along. Today you had a doctor's appointment and you still fit me in. Like, I feel like I'm part of the day. You You're part are. of the family. Duh. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Well, congratulations. This has been like the talk of the couple to throuple Reddit is the fact that one, the show deceived us because you're still together and you're throuple. And two, you have such exciting yep. news. So this is like, this is my dream to get to touch base with you basically. Yay. I know. I feel like so much has changed like since the show. So we're really excited. <laughs> I can't wait to get into that. Before we get before we talk about the show at all, let's tell everybody where to follow you both. So everybody get your phones out, pull up Instagram. Where do you want people to follow you? So my Instagram is fitness first. So one S T underscore I F B B Pro. And then my Instagram is Dylan Bear B A I R underscore R D. Perfect. And then I'll have these linked as well in the YouTube and on Spotify. So you guys can also click there, but follow them on Instagram, send some love. I love looking at all of your clients that you post, all the testimonials. I'm not even into fitness in that regard, but it's still like very motivating. That's what we do. We love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's keeping us busy for over the, for gosh, oh my gosh, we've been doing that for like six plus years, longer than that. So yeah, about eight busy. plus. Yeah. And you only share positive content, which I find like very inspiring because there's so much online. Like, you know, I have my outlets where I'm getting like news from and stuff, but even like yeah. making the decision to make a change in your life, physical activity wise, some people can put such a negative spin on it where you feel like you're kind of being judged by your trainers. And I feel like you don't don't do that, neither of you. Well, we're positive people, yeah, and that's exactly what we plan to put on, put out in the atmosphere in the, the universe. So Yeah, we're big too. Like our team's more than just like a team to us. It's always been just family. So like more of the community base. And I feel like when you can like motivate your clients in that way too and have them support, feel like a friend and like family as Absolutely. well. It's like they're so much more likely to continue hitting their goals instead of being like afraid yeah. too. We make it fun for sure. And that's what Jonathan said. Like I, when I had Jonathan on, there was nothing but glowing reviews. And I was like, huh, some, I'm, yeah, it's great. To be Jonathan now, super, super excited. He's doing really well. That's what I, I, I he looks great. I mean, he always does, but I was like, yeah. I was peeping. I was like, huh, got some muscle definition. I could see it. I could see the yeah. results. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, it was really cute. Cause uh, during the filming of the process, Jonathan was always asking Lauren and I about Nutrition. his meals that he was eating. He's like, is this okay to eat? And we're like, yeah, you're doing great, man. So he was always asking us questions throughout the entire so process. Cute. So uh, yeah, we love him so much. He got like a free trial. Like, you know, like he was like kind of testing you guys out and like the meal plans. And then he was like, all right, I'll commit to this. Yeah, yep. <laughs> he's crushing it. He's doing so good. Um, so before we talk about the show, I want to know how you met, where you guys are from. Can you give us some background? Yeah. Yeah. So we're originally from Ohio. So we currently li live in Arizona. We've been here for four years now, but we were both born and raised in Ohio. Um, and we met back in about 2015. And it was actually like through the bodybuilding competition through world. Fitness. Yep. Yep. There was a... How, how it happened, there was a girl that was on my fitness team that was dating him. So I knew of him, but I just heard, like, I wasn't supposed to like him from another girl on my team. So I was like, okay, we don't like Dylan. Yeah, but why, <laughs> why were you told not to like me? Yes, because give us the tea. Had, because that girl had a crush on you. <laughs> so, yeah. I was about to say, someone had dibs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that was the exactly. situation pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so I was just told not to like Dylan. Um, but it's so funny because it was like a year after he's single, I was single and, uh, I was just kind of like in the process of like my own fitness journey. We kind of crossed paths. And from there we started messaging on Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> Love. Snapchat is the 
platform for us. That's what started us all. And we uh, just slid, I slid into her DMs and I was sending her a bunch of food recipes because I knew she was into fitness. Yeah. And I was like, you need to try this recipe out. The calories and macros are really good. And then once <laughs> I realized she was actually making the recipes, I thought that was my end. And I was like, hell yeah, I think she likes me. She's making the food recipes that I'm sending her. <laughs> That's yeah. so niche. That's like the equivalent to when you like send your crush like a song that you like or you make them like a playlist. Yeah. Like you guys send recipes. I love it. <laughs> one of our love languages for oh, sure. 100%. <laughs> we are foods and still are to this day. That does not change. <laughs> yep. What part of Ohio are you from? Because I'm from Ohio as well. Oh, no what? kidding. Yes. I'm actually from around the Columbus area because i um, about an hour yeah. west of Columbus, but I went to Ohio State for seven and a half years to get my master's degree. Yep. Wow. I'm from the Cleveland area, Lorraine to be specific, but Cleveland, what about you? That's so funny. I'm from Lorraine County specifically. <laughs> that is hilarious. And like, I won't tell listeners like further so they don't pinpoint where we're from. I, yeah. Exactly. But that's a very, like when you said Lorraine, I'm like, I, she, you said Cleveland and I'm like, no chance she's going to say Lorraine County. And then you said Lorraine. I'm like, <laughs> So I always, I usually leave with Cleveland because most people will get that. Oh my God, no wonder we have a connection. That makes sense. <laughs> I get it now. You guys are Midwest people. Colum Ohio yep. State University, very hard to get into, by the way. So props to you, Dylan. I wasn't accepted. Very thankful. Yes. <laughs> very thankful. Yeah, I did my undergrad and graduate schooling there. So it was, it was a great seven and a half years long, but he definitely worth it. Time. May yeah. I ask what you got your master's in? Is it, it like uh, yeah. kinesiology? Okay. It's actually medical dietetics to become a registered dietitian. So, um, because I am just so fascinated and intrigued with nutrition and nutrient metabolism, because there's so much misinformation out there on what you should eat or what you should eat. And I just wanted to be, you know, getting all the science and evidence-based practices so I could provide that to not only my clients, but, you know, educate the entire world on wow. research and science when it comes to nutrition. That's so interesting. I'm going to have to circle back to that because later I want to ask you if berberine is actually good or bad. I keep hearing from that. I keep hearing about Ooh. it. And I'm like, I wonder oh. what an actual. Control. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there's actually great data on it. So yeah, we can talk all about that. Ask That's, me what questions you got. That's what I've heard. So I was like, you'll know the data side of that. Yes, I do. So what was your first date? You guys met through bodybuilding. What was your first date? The gym? <laughs> uh, actually, no. Should we count BB Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have you ever had BB Bop? That actually sounds for really, for, is it Korean? Yes. Yeah. It's like the Korean version of Chipotle. Okay. I think it's better than Chipotle. That, so when we hung out for the first time, so I was going to college up north two hours away. So for two years, we technically did a long distance and we would just kind of share weekends and drive back and forth. And it worked really well because she was studying to get her bachelor's in nursing. I was studying to, you know, get my master's in dietetics. So during the week we were on the academic grind and oh, then yeah. every weekend I would either drive up to her or she would see me and having that kind of time away during the week really made us appreciate the time that we had together. So we did that uh -huh. for what, about two, one and a half to two years uh -huh. in the beginning parts of our relationship. And then at that, that time she got her BS um, in, uh, in nursing and then moved to with me in Columbus. And the rest but, is truly history. Yeah. Congratulations to you too. Nursing is another very difficult yeah. field. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, no longer doing bedside. And if you want to save any of that, we can go into that too. But yeah, I did bedside for like two years and wow. I love it though. My whole family, I feel like nursing is just kind of like goes goes through the family. So that's kind of what was passed down. Um, but yeah, our first date, uh, was BB Bop. It was just like a little lunch date. Love. Um, I was visiting Columbus, didn't really know anybody at the time other than him. So that was like our first little, little date. And he won me over with Korean barbecue. <laughs> I love that. So when you were first dating, have you guys always been like interested or have you always been polyamorous? Like, were you open or had, was it monogamous prior when you first started? Honestly, when we first started dating, I personally didn't know anything about polyamory. Neither did I. Got it. Yeah. Neither did I. It was definitely monogamous. And I mean, it, it, our relationship stayed that up until actually after we got married. So we were together from 2015. We got married in 2021, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 2021. Yeah. Um, and it was like a couple months after where we had our first experience with anything that was polyamorous. Yeah. That's, and, sorry, go ahead. 
no, I was, just, I was just saying, yeah, we didn't even realize what was happening when we had our first um, interaction with this additional girl. And when it happened, we really reflected and we're like, wow, we actually like this because it brought Lauren and I together even more, which we didn't think was even possible. Yeah, because we're just like we're married. I mean, we tied the knot. And I mean, yeah, there was like literally. And I think I truly think why it worked so well and how that happened was that we had those foundations mm-hmm. and we had that like trust, communication, all the things that you need in a relationship down. Yes. And it was so much more than what we ever would have even thought. We never had the conversation even before that. It just kind of flowed and happened. Naturally. Yeah. So fast forwarding, first of all, thank you for sharing that. That makes sense. I, your journey was interesting. I listened to Zachary Reality's podcast to preface before oh, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I wanted yeah. to like get acquainted and make sure I, I knew details. And I thought it was really interesting that like most of the couples on the show, your first um, like polyamorous experience was shortly before some couples hadn't really dabbled yet, but they were open to it. Um, yeah. So let's start with how you were cast for the show. Let's start there. Yeah. Yeah. So we recently, well, we were coming back from a trip from Europe. So I don't know if like we were popping up in like some of their like feeds, like the casting, like producers and stuff. But we got an email one morning, both of us in our emails. And it was just saying that there's the show that is taking monogamous couples and looking to see if non-monogamy would be for them by adding a third into the relationship. And so we both were reading over this email. We're like, like, is this even, <laughs> is this even real? Um, but then, yeah, they set us up with our first interview and I, we were just like, wow, this is real. Right. And we think that we would be great for this, you know, um, or we were down for the show. challenge. We were down for the yeah. challenge. Absolutely. Lauren and I are all about new experiences and we just like to have fun. And this, I mean, being on reality TV about non-monogamy, we were like, Let's fucking try to get Some, on the yeah, show. And something see, felt right to it did feel try right. it. Yeah. You had a very optimistic approach to it, whereas your family's response was a little bit more guarded or hesitant, I noticed, because I imagine it was a little bit of a, like a surprise for them. But now, how are they feeling? Yeah. So the first time that they ever heard about some polyamory or us like interested in it or pursuing that was when we got accepted onto the show and we're like, okay, this is the time where we should probably tell some of our family. And right. so we did. So thankfully, you know, they did know before we had it out there. We didn't know that they would be on it. That was a surprise. <laughs> that was a surprise. So, so, so awesome. I think it really set the tone though for them to accept that or be more understanding about it because they know Dylan and I for who we are. So at the end of the day, we know that they just want to see us happy. And the more that we communicate with them, I feel like they've been more and more accepting of it. Absolutely. And we just always can, you know, tell them we're, we're unbreakable. There's nothing that is going to ever tear us apart. Um, and they, they understand that. And that's why I think they're a lot more supportive and they just see how truly happy Lauren and I are. And that's all, all you know, ultimately what matters the most to them. Yeah. And I feel like polyamory, it's something that I am educating myself on as well, just so that I, you know, can have these conversations and I can enjoy watching a show like this, but also take note of like, mm, you know, like that, that may not be conducive to yeah. poly, like polyamory in the real world or back. I was saying, um, oh yeah, I feel like there's, there's so much like of a, like a, a, gap that needs to be bridged with understanding Mm -hmm. polyamory because as i look into it it's really not about you know like the sexual relationship it's really about the ability to love multiple partners and i'm fortunate enough that one of my family members is actually in a polyamorous relationship yeah so it's been really interesting to and like opening to be able to talk you know, with them about it more and what their partner um, and them are interested in and understanding that it's freeing for them to talk about. No, they can talk about with me too, because there's no judgment. I just fully understand that they have the capacity to love multiple partners. Yeah. Yeah, And that's, I love that you brought that up because I think a lot of people have this misinformation or they just have not the full understanding of what polyamory necessarily is or could be. And that's another reason why Lauren and I felt called to be on, you know, this show because we wanted to uh, address and educate people on, 
it's all about spreading more love. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sexual kind of interaction or relationship. It can be, of course, but you and know, I think a lot of people think that it's like they hear that or see that and they're like, oh, there must be something wrong with that couple or there must be something wrong in Absolutely. the relationship dynamic. Yeah. When it's like actually, no, for it to be successful and truly like a beautiful thing, it's that the, of the study foundation, but then it's just sharing and spreading more of that love with other people or someone else. Which can truly elevate the love that you already have for one another with others. And uh -huh. that's the way that Lauren and I, you know, are, are so thankful for what polyamory has brought to our marriage and other people too. And I feel like that's such a, um, a thing you're right with like heteronormative and monogamous relationships. Like the inkling is to be like, well, like, what aren't you getting from me that like you can get from another partner or like, what is your partner not fulfilling for you? Like, oh my God. And it's not about that. You know what I mean? Um, in regards to that, I'm going to be jumping around a little cause I had planned this for later, but we're yeah. here. So, um, in regards to how we're referencing polyamory were you a little yeah. bit surprised at perhaps watching yourselves back on the show and maybe the way that it was portrayed that physicality was prioritized for you both yeah you know and it's funny too i mean i think you can even tell from the show though like dylan and i are not very problematic people so we almost had an idea that like that's kind of probably what our like focus or like our story yes. would be where probably a little bit more of like the physical side of things. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that, but they did, they did full, it did come full circle, but yes. through some of those episodes, it seemed like that physicality was like sex. Yeah. Yes. And a priority for us. I mm -hmm. mean, we addressed throughout the, the filming that, you know, physical touch is one of our love languages and it wasn't, you know, brought full circle towards the tail end of the entire series where we, you could hear us further explain like physical touch is just like, this just like, like me resting or, and just yeah, having that connectivity uh -huh. with Lauren it doesn't necessarily have to be any kind of sexual interaction um and, and it was interesting to like watch that back yes. though and we're just like ah that's me oh god everybody's thinking something completely different probably <laughs> because I can imagine now that you're clarifying that that per and correct me if I'm wrong, but perhaps like the context was missing for what you were speaking about it being a little slow paced with Mia. And I, I think that maybe you were just wanting like more affection and validation throughout the day, like little signs of affection yeah. versus in the bedroom, you weren't progressing yes. to sex. Yeah. Correct. Correct. I mean, cause that's really big for us, you know, and I, how we, view it and what we've learned even through the process of filming um, and learning how polyamory does work within our relationship is that it, just like us, like it took us a while to get to the point of even going that far in the relationship. Yes. So we want to make sure that if we're bringing somebody into our relationship too, we want to take it slow and have those baby steps. And it's not, yeah, exactly. Like there's no need to rush. Yeah. And we learned that right off the bat, as you saw with uh, Becca yeah. entering, you know, with, Becca was our first choice. And yes. I mean, right off the bat, we, you know, had a little, you know, make out session. And to be honest with you, that at that point in time, we're like, whoa, that was quick. And from that point on, we slowed it down yeah. <laughs> um, big time. And that's honestly was the, the most that we actually did it physicality wise and yeah. sexual wise was uh, uh, making out with Becca to that degree that you saw in the first one to two episodes. <laughs> and I imagine, you know, it's exciting. I'm not sure, like even a couple glasses of wine, I'd probably be a lot more liable to make out with someone, you know, if you're drinking, having a good time, you're on a show. I don't know. I can see, I can see how that happens or you're, you're, and also Becca's beautiful. The vibes are there, you know, so I get it. Right. I yeah, that's what we're bad. There was, we went off of more, like even in that very beginning, just like the physical the, attraction. Well, and, and, and connection. I think the connection, there's like, we can feel like energy. Yeah. We're really big on that. So that Absolutely. obviously was there. That's why we, um, you know, wanted to get to know Becca more and things like that. But then but, also, like in the beginning, because we were thrown in it so quick, we met everybody for a brief, like it was five fast. to 10 like, minutes. Everything's moving fast. And then yeah. the next day we had to make a decision who we we're going to bring in the, the household. Um, so we had to make a decision 
based on not much information other than, you know, physicality. And it was, we told everybody it was like speed dating or just reading everybody's Instagram. That's what it felt like. Cause we wanted to meet everybody. So we're just like, hi, I'm Dylan. Like, who are you? And then, you know, onto the next one to meet as many people as you possibly could in a short time frame. Yes. Changes for season two. I think longer mixers could be good. I was also going to hit this later, but once again, while we're here, how, how do you think it would have been different if you were able to date multiple singles um, at once? Like, would that have been perhaps a different, you know, a different experience? Because you, you are growing with multiple people at the same time. It's not as right. locked in. That or, you know, because all of the singles were at a different location. So yes. you only really got to know who you were with. And I think it would have been really cool to have the experience of seeing how everybody was around one another or spending more time with everybody outside of just the mixers, but maybe like within the same household. Now maybe that could get messier. I don't know, but I think but personally I think that, that it would, would help. Be good. I yes. think it would be very Without helpful. A doubt, we thought we would be getting a lot more time with the That's singles right. and we only had the, the mixers and um, whoever we chose to, you know, bring as bring in as our uh, addition. That's the only time we really got with the, the single. So it really didn't get too much time to meet and, and further, you know, see who we wanted to vibe with. And I feel like it would give more context too, because um, I wanted to see if you wanted to address this, Dylan. And if you don't, I'll edit this part out. Um, but I was curious, you know, like they did sort of make it seem like, or maybe not they made it seem, but I interpreted it this way watching. I mm. It was sort of interpreted like, your connection with Becca and as a, as a thruple was per, perhaps cut short because maybe you felt d uh, not included or perhaps like Lauren was getting a faster connection with Becca. And I think some of the audience was like wondering about that too. What, yeah. what do you, how do you like, what, what was actually happening behind closed scenes, the context? Yeah. So what we ended up finding out really quick was Becca had some previous um, relationship trauma coming up throughout our throuple experience. And it got, a, we got a, I personally got a little bit of um, backlash from that. And she was pulling away a little bit and getting distant from me. And we all came to the realization that um, we, I, she had more of attraction to Lauren right. than me. And then you saw in the episode, Lauren had the conversation, the way that this dynamic is going to work with Lauren and I's marriage is there needs to be equality all throughout. And that's yes. when we decided to end it with Becca. And we all had a great conversation and understanding that we were just going to be friends at that point in time, moving forward with the, the filming. Yeah. But I think it's really cool though. I mean, and, and looking back at it and I know that she could agree too. It was things that like she didn't even know she still needed to work through from before. And of yeah, course, so you know, they can't shine too much light on that. But I think we were meant to all be in each other's lives for just the whole purpose of helping her, you know, grow and like find what those things were in her own, her own growth. Yeah. Because she didn't realize, you know, some of the things that were coming up on the show, she didn't realize that she was still dealing with some of these, you know, previous experiences and then for it to be pulled up to the surface and for her to address it and for, you know, us to provide a safe space for her to open up in that way. It was really good. And, yeah. um, you know, even though there seemed to be some tension with us, um, with Beck and I personally, it, ended up it was more so for us, like quick. just really needing to give her that space that she Absolutely. needed to process those things that were Absolutely. coming up. So that's what was, you know, really happening. Yes, and why the separation kind of happened, just so she could have that space that she needed and that safe space. Yeah, and I was really proud of her for opening up because mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, and she'll. Um, you know, attest to this, it's, it's hard for her to open up and, and trust people and, um, for her to be able to open up in that deep of a, a level was really cool to see. Yeah. And I, I was really proud of her. I'm glad to hear that you guys are still friends and I'm glad to add context. It's so true that when you're put with a group of people that you don't know prior, um, some people will trigger you. Some people will remind you of your past. Even as a viewer, we aren't able to watch reality TV without projecting, which is why mm -hmm. I thought Dylan was going to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Because it's like muscles, good looking, <laughs> tall. And I, and I said that going into the show because they asked <laughs> us, how I think people are going to perceive you. And I mean, being a bodybuilder, I knew right off the bat, they're going to see just it my, is my physicality. <laughs> they're going to see that I'm, you know, some uh, Jack bro bodybuilder guy. And you know what? I, I 
I wanted people to kind of have that uh, because once they get to know me, they'll realize I am very emotional and I'm just a teddy bear. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Yes. Ha like emphasis on the bear. Cause that's your last name, right? Yeah. That's perfect. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I -R. <laughs> yes. Teddy bear. B E I R. <laughs> but no, I'm really, I'm really glad it adds, it adds context. I, and also too, you know, like I said, like we project, like we watch shows back to back and certain characters are like represented in another show. Then it's like, oh, mm -hmm. well, it's probably going to be the same thing here. So it, it actually, mm -hmm. it's actually better, if, in my opinion, if people think you're an asshole and then you surprise everyone and you're nice versus if they think mm -hmm. you're nice. And then at the end of the show, people are like, excuse, oh, I'm duped. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly like a learning opportunity too. like don't make us assumptions don't judge. Yeah. absolutely yeah, don't judge. it's always that yeah i always put it back on myself and i'm always like why did i project onto that how can i not project like what insecurity yeah. in me sees this and then and then i try to go from there and talk about that stuff on my podcast so that more people can give grace you know from that, yeah. I think it's all. I think it's a good learning opportunity and like a time to like ground yourself and recheck yourself. I think we all need that sometimes, Without you know. Now. Yes. So going to the conversation with Mia next because I'm sure mm -hmm. that conversation there was also more to. Um, because I think once again, it we don't see everything. It's edited so briefly, so it's kind of like she says, "I'm feeling like a toy. I feel kind of dehumanized," and then. Mm -hmm you're swapping for Jess. You know what I mean? It's like the next right. scene. Right. Like so quick. I mean, even watching that back, yes. Like I was like, wow, that time with Mia just like flew yeah. by on those episodes where obviously in reality, as we were going through that, yes, we had so much more time together. Um, you know, and I think, and we, we had these conversations with Mia, but of course they aren't left in there. Like at one point, you know, we had to like kind of keep things a little bit more private, but Dylan and I always really communicate if it was on there or not, we always communicated like really what our intentions were going into the show. So sometimes it could seem like on there, like the intentions weren't there. Or it was like bad intentions, but as a married couple, we, this is something that was really serious to us of finding what type of individual would be like great to bring into our marriage and build a relationship with. Yeah. So we always said like, we were really timing the whole entire experience with knowing how many stay or swap ceremonies there were, yes. how yeah. many mixers there were. We went in with a game plan to meet as many new people as we possibly could. And that's exactly what we did. And that's why we continued to, you know, with Becca, then we'd swapped her out for Mia. And then we wanted to get to know Jess even more. Um, so with, we're glad that we did that because we got to, you know, just see a lot of different personalities and figure out what mm -hmm. Lauren and I did and didn't necessarily want within bringing someone into our marriage. And things with Mia were great. We definitely Absolutely. realized like we wanted I mean, a little bit more of the quality time. And I think we probably could have used quality time verbally a little bit more in those versus still, you know, physical touch, like hand holding, but also quality time. I felt like that was the one thing that was missing. Um, and that you don't see too much, but there was a lot of times where like we were together, but she was off doing something else. We didn't get a lot of uh, quality time too, which is important to us as well. Right. Um, but there were so many conversations that were left out of just like, you know, even like things were going really great. Like me was a great person. She was that energy that we needed. Yes. Very positive uh -huh. people. Like, she's very positive. Like we are, and we really love that. And it was a good change of pace from, you know, the things with that happened with Becca to get me as, you know, positive energy, um, into the household for a few days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, because I I'm, I'm not polyamorous like that I am personally but I would be curious it seems like that is what the the purpose of the show was you know is to really like I think um Maximo and Ash made a comment about that as well like you know like while it may seem like we're just swapping out a third and like things may seem like transactional to viewers who aren't getting context like for us mm -hmm. like uh, we're polyamorous like we're, we're we're experiencing you but it doesn't mean we can't experience you and it doesn't mean that we still aren't curious about you as well you know very very true and i love that they talk about that as well um because yes like to the viewers it, it does seem like that 100 percent. i could agree too if i was watching yeah. that 
but then knowing there is X amount of time to have an end result and you are correct, like polyamory there. And that's a really cool thing too. And you know what, Ashley and Max were really, and I would say Corey Wilder, they, both of them really highlighted the fact that there's so many different approaches yes. to polyamory because we're still new to it. it we learned that it could be an open dynamic yeah. or it could be a close triad where it's just three yes. people. There's so many different ways that you can go about it. And what matters the most is like you set those boundaries and you have those conversations with your significant other to figure out what works well for you guys. There's so many different ways that you can go about it. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people, even ourselves initially getting, you know, more experience with polyamory, we were trying to figure out where, we would fall or like what, or what category or what us. terminology within polyamory works for us. Right. Um, and Warren and I came to the agreement. It's like, you know, we're not going to try to, you know, fit any kind of mold. We're going to create our own unique form yes. and lifestyle of polyamory and whatever that is. That's what as we're as you're communicating with everybody. Yeah. 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 Communication is everything with this as you probably can see from watching the yep. series. <laughs> and that, and that, and not to put, polyamorous relationships on a pedestal because I'm obviously realistic, but I do enjoy that aspect. Like it, there is a real sense of communication. If it's an agreement that you've made with your partner in the confines of your relationship, like there really are these conversations that others would perceive as like difficult or like off limits, like how, you know, like a monogamous couple that's very um, exclusive or potentially even controlling or possessive may feel like, how dare you be attracted to someone else when right. like Denise and I were saying, nah, that doesn't really happen. Like once you're dating someone, there's you, your eyes don't close. You're still able to see other people's beauty. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And you know, I think we've even learned, I had this conversation with some friends or people that have entered our lives, like from the filming and from the show, like, you know, why does cheating happen? Cheating happens because there is a lack of communication and there's a lack of trust. And so maybe, just maybe for some of those couples or individuals, maybe having the conversations of an open relationship or a polyamorous relationship could maybe make that relationship work a little bit more. It just takes more communication and... And that's a, that's a great perspective to have because after the filming of the show, we've had so many conversations and people coming up to us asking for some advice when it comes to maybe opening up their relationship to the polyamory lifestyle or non-monogamous lifestyle because it can actually help save some marriages or relationships um, instead of, you know, cheating you know, have a conversation of potentially opening up that relationship. So as long as you guys have that communication. And heavy mm -hmm. on the communication too, because um, it's difficult to have conversations when things may be stagnant. But but like you said, you know, communication and boundaries. So so you're stagnant and that, that you know, that, that physical attraction isn't there anymore. So what do we do about it? You know what I mean? Like is our boundary that we're going to set date night and set up a goal for ourselves? Is our, is our boundary that we're gonna watch a different type of adult film? Is our boundary that we're gonna go to a, uh, a strip club? Like what's our boundary, you know? And if it's, if you can't, uh -huh if you can't like come together, it is, it, then it's a good communication. Like then, you know, sp split, maybe, we're yeah, not. maybe split yeah. ways. Like, you know, like if, yeah. if, if you're not open to being open together because you're both, you know, just maybe bored or I don't know. It's, it's it, people act like it's not possible to get bored in marriage and it really is. And it's not something that's always frowned upon as much as like normal, you know? Right, right. You know, I think it's really important. Like, I feel like I'm not a big believer of like honeymoon phase. I feel like we've always just had a great connection and it's just always fun. And we keep it exciting. We all have the choice. Everybody has the choice, you know? And so it's just a matter of, I think, the willingness to grow yes. with one another, you know, because there's always going to be growth. And I think that that's what makes a relationship beautiful too, challenging each other, pushing each other out of um, comfort zones. Definitely. So. It's just, I, I think it's important to kind of have weekly check-ins and this goes for even monogamous couples. Absolutely. Like yeah. 
have a weekly sit down check in and like just see, hey, what were the great things that happened this week? What were the maybe not so great things? And what are things that we could do to improve that? That's something that we've always done too. Do so the communication aspect, talking about the challenges from the show, do you think that they like did they help you communicate and get to know your singles or was it conversations behind the scenes together that were more helpful? I mean, I think a little bit of everything, though. I mean, all the challenges or relationship sessions really brought a lot of education for us because, again, we were relatively new right. to polyam, and it was really cool to have Shamira and then Scott, you know, be involved in all of these challenges and relationship therapy sessions so we can learn more about how we can further make this something within our marriage. Um, but I think, go ahead. I was just going to say, and I don't know if any of the couples have touched on this that you've spoken to yet, but one thing that hasn't, wasn't shown too much, which I think was actually really helpful. Shamira would have like separate private, like one-on-ones with the couples oh, just that. to kind of go over like what their current situations were and how to integrate that or, um, keep incorporating that into the rest of the filming and the rest of the show. So that was actually really important too. That wasn't shown. That's great. I, I just... I would love to see therapy included in reality TV. Although I do, I'll, I do acknowledge like there's confidentiality. Sometimes things come up in sessions that are just like, no, I don't want this out for the world. So, and I do get to a therapy session being televised kind of takes away from the authenticity of being able to open up. So I get it. I get why I'm not given what I want, which is to see the therapy Mm -hmm. sessions, but I'm glad that you had them and I'm glad to know that behind the scenes, was, you weren't just like sitting with all of this information and then waiting for the next challenge. Yeah, and that's right. something that actually attracted us to being on this experience as well is because we knew Shamira was going to be involved with this and it was, was going to be an opportunity for us to learn more and have that safe space for us to, you know, be vulnerable and open up in ways that we haven't and had these, you know, have conversations and ask questions that Lauren and I were so curious about wanting to know more. And about. not really having that community, although we did have some friends like in different polyamorous lifestyles and yeah. things like that. It was really great to have this opportunity to be only surrounded by that and with professionals. So it really was just like this like relationship retreat at the same time, not just a reality TV show. So it was really cool. Very cool. So what did you learn about yourselves from the show? I feel like that's a, now is a good point to ask that. What did you take away from the experience? Yeah. Well, personally, what comes to mind, my mind was the jealousy therapy session around the fireplace where it was was all about jealousy and if you can remember i was the only one to write on the paper that i can never i couldn't think of a time that i was jealous amongst the relationship with lauren and i uh, because i kind of viewed jealousy as maybe a negative thing or not the most um proactive thing in a relationship but then lauren and I, uh, you know, talked about it and I was actually jealous, a little jealous when Becca said that she had more of a, an attraction with those two yes. versus me. And I wasn't being vulnerable enough to be accepting of that. And mm-hmm. once I did, I'm like, <laughs> you know what? It's okay to have jealousy. Absolutely. In fact, a little bit of jealousy in any kind of relationship healthy. is actually healthy. Yes. Yes. And once I came to that acceptance of it's okay to be jealous and become more vulnerable, yes. um, that was... I was just proud of myself for coming to that um, realization and that further allowed me to grow not only, you know, individually, but within our marriage even more. Yeah. Like that, that alone was like this catalyst of just like, see, like things that I've, I've noticed now until from then, like I've just in little small situations, just being more vulnerable and knowing it's okay to maybe not feel okay or just being a little bit more honest like i've seen those things ever since filming too which is really great and super proud of it i'm so proud of you thank you for sharing that and you know what like we're humans we, we're multifaceted yeah. we're multi-dimensional um i can do some behaviors that can be controlling it's about checking in with myself and being like do does this does this actually affect me or is this something that makes me uncomfortable and i need to check in with myself and it's like that doesn't make me a bad person or a controlling person the same way that doesn't make you a jealous person it is about checking yourself and i love that because it is really important and i think i always try to make the other other people around me 
happy without checking in with myself as much as I should. And Mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to give that, give yourself that time and that space Mm -hmm. and really reflect on those kind of, you know, situations. And it's going to not only help elevate your own happiness, but the happiness for people around you too. Absolutely. Being vulnerable, sharing what you're thinking, cluing people into like what's going on in our mind is just a game changer. And all of us are human. All of us navigate emotions that are challenging, but processing them in a healthy way and then reflecting back on them is is huge if you're not reflecting back and if you do think that we like we don't need changes then that's when we get stagnant it's always good to do a a look in the mirror yeah and i'm so so thankful for lauren you know for that very reason because she's allowed me to you know have these kind of conversations and reflections on myself and to know it's okay to not always be okay (laughs) you know i always kind of have that again i'm a very optimistic person and I, I just have become more vulnerable to realizing not, it, sometimes life is not going to be always optimistic. And Lauren has really helped me um, be open to that. Yeah. And we're from the Midwest. Like if you're from Ohio and you're not a people pleaser, good for you about yourself. Uh, Thank you. So let's get into things that are happening now. First of all, yeah. how has your pregnancy been? It's been going. It's been going really good. She's been crushing it. She's doing so good. (laughs) I'm just like, every day, I'm like, I'm so damn proud of you. She's doing doing the hard work. You're turning dad mode now, though. And it's so cute. I love that. He's ready. He's like, babe, be careful. This sidewalk has a little bit of a, like, an upgrade in it. What was I doing? Oh, we were, like, taking a a booth down for one of our other companies. And I was, like, picking up boxes. He was like, no, 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 that's too heavy. I'm like, I'm fine. You can watch me do this. Like, you don't, you let me do that. And then also we went on a hike the other, the other day. And I'm just like, I don't know if you should do that. Like, let me help assist you. And just, I feel like I need to hold on to her 24 seven more. It's cute. That's so cute. That's so, like, I would find that cute 90% of the time. And then if I had a a hormone swing, I would be like, get away from me. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden, like, like I was like, yes, like zones. Through a little bit. I feel like, I think honestly, it was the first trimester uh, where maybe those like mood swings were a little bit more. I think honestly the hardest thing, like, so I definitely, vaping had me before I was like vaping for a couple of years. So when I tested positive, I had to stop yeah. obviously. And that was probably the hardest 100%. week out of this whole entire pregnancy was just like the hormones with the, with a lot of hormonal that. shifts like, oh my God. and so then stopping we're good the now. Routine, yeah. But <laughs> she's, she's crushing it. And I'm so damn proud of her seriously. Cause I mean, she's making it seem like a breeze um, cause we, and you know, we coach a lot of athletes and a lot of women through pregnancy. And there's a lot of times that, uh, you know, pregnancy isn't the easiest for Absolutely. many of these women. And I was expecting you know, things to be a little bit more rough, uh, for Lauren throughout this, but it's she's, just it's been really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, you know, her mindset with life and, and, and health and, and fitness, it's really helped her you know, throughout this pregnancy without a doubt. And you guys have such a great, you know, like canvas sort of like you, you take such great care of yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's like ideal situations. Like I can't think of a more lively protected womb. You know what I mean? Like you're already eating all the good stuff. You're already getting all the exercise. This baby's flexible, got the foot in the mouth already. Mm-hmm. I know. All flexible. All future gymnasts. Exactly. He, like, wait, she, right? It's going to be a girl. Yeah. yeah. Baby girl. Girl dad. Girl mom. Yep. Obsessed. Obsessed. Have you had any cravings? And if so, what, what are they? I'd say the biggest one now, it's not really weird because it's things I, I ate this before, but it's just like a need for it. I haven't noticed it as much, but it's still like top of pickles, like anything like salty pickles. Yep. I'm usually, drinking out of the pickle jar yes. with every meal pretty much. I'm like, yeah. I was, I was not as much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> usually I'm a big sweets person. That was always my like guilty pleasure, but I haven't really been wanting that stuff as much anymore. It's been more so like salty things. If I ever go, if I ever catch myself craving a pickle or that brininess, I will know I'm pregnant because that's not <laughs> something I like now. I'll do a pickleback occasionally, JMO pickleback. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. But the texture of a pickle and knowing that it's a cucumber, it's, it freak, I can't tell you how much it freaks me out. I, I don't know why, but I'm like, this is a fucking cucumber. Like, why does it, this why is it that so, is... I don't know. It just, it freaks me out so much. I can't eat them, but 
was, but if you were craving, definitely then you definitely would. Yes, yeah, respect. <laughs> and my boyfriend is obsessed with pickles. Like he loves them. I have like six things in the fridge right now. So I identify with that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, Not making this about I, me, but like I always no. somehow do at some point in an interview. So that was my 30 seconds of making it about me. Sorry. Thanks for bearing with me. I love it. Oh, <laughs> that's so I love that. That is hilarious. You're not a pickle person. I've never, no, take like, it. I've never thought about that about a pickle. I probably still won't question it, but. <laughs> right. Like once you, once you just realize like what it is, I don't know why, but I just look at it and I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, how are you? So you guys are still in your throuple. You guys are still with Jess. How are you navigating the distance? Yeah. yeah. So kind of like, well, I guess it circles back to to like your question about like, what did we learn from the experience and for us? So yes. Yeah, so at, at the end of the show, it says that we separated two months after filming and we saw that we're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because we were like, yeah, we know exactly how this show is going to end. And then when they said that, that Jess, Lauren and I ended a relationship, I was like, oh shit. Like plot twist. I just, I mean, I was like, plot to as as they got us. Uh, yeah, so we brought it to the production team's attention. And um, they but said they that we could talk about it. Yes. And, yeah, they, that was, you know, an uh, error on their end. But, um, you know, things with Jess is, it, it's they're amazing. We love mm -hmm. Jess. The distance is great. However, we have come to realize that our kind of relationship and dynamic with the three of us is more of an emotional and deep connection in that manner versus yeah. any kind of physical um, interaction. And it's so cool to see that. And that's again, why we're so excited to be more vocal about the world of polyamory, because again, like we were talking about earlier, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical or sexual by any yes. means. Um, and the emotional connection that Jess, Lauren and I have together is so beautiful and so thankful for that. And we learned that it actually took us like, so it was about that two month after filming where we really started to actually learn what our relationship dynamic looks like. And we realized that like our role in her life outside of just this like emotional bond and relationship is just helping and I guess inspire her, motivate her to find her person because her person, she does want to settle down in a monogamous relationship, most likely by the end of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, but it's really beautiful that we can like share our relationship and just like the love that we share for another with her yes. and then open that up. And we learn like, so she can freely, you know, of course, get to know individuals because she is in Texas. We're in Arizona. Yes. So there is that distance and quality time is really important to us too. So we realized like, We'll still keep that relationship, but then actually have more of an open dynamic and have been getting, been getting to know somebody over here mm -hmm. as well, where, you know, we can spend that quality time and we've all communicated that right. Jess knows, we'll know if she's talking to anybody. It's really cool that we can have this like really open, but like trusting dynamic. And that, and that is exactly what you were saying you wanted from the experience too, is to really just find out where you know what we don't you don't want to be confined to this the stereotypical not stereotypical like the typical or just like and i don't mm -hmm. even think polyamory has a typical which is what i love right. about it right. there is no yeah. one way to do this there's our way exactly. and it doesn't matter if, it, if it's not the same as anyone else because it's not about that it's not about following someone's path right a hundred i think that's so it, beautiful i'll never not think that's beautiful because it is it is. It's Love is beautiful yeah. and it comes in so many different forms. And it's what matters at the end of the day is what makes you the most happy. And this for Lauren and I truly makes us happy. And we love that for, for ourselves. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So in when the baby comes, will Jess and your new partner that you're talking with, will they be involved in the baby's life? And what will that look like? Yeah, I love, 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 love this question. We do, yeah. Cause go ahead. You go. I mean, this, these are questions that we were even asking ourselves yeah. and yeah. we were just like, at the, you know, when we first found out that we were pregnant, we didn't know. You don't know until you go through yeah. and have these kind of conversations and we kind of were just going with the flow. And after, um, you know, the beginning phases in that first semester, or first semester, semester. <laughs> back in school, <laughs> <Trimester>. <laughs> that, that first trimester. 
um, Lauren and I had the conversation to kind of put a brief pause on polyamory because we just wanted to focus on her and I. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't end thing with, no, with no, Christ. Right. We still just, like, she was so excited to hear that we were pregnant, but I guess anything that would be like opening that up more mm -hmm. to somebody out yes. here, we just felt like it was good to just keep this between us and, you know, this very special moment. But then as time went on, you know, and then we're like really learning the dynamic, like, yes, we, we would love to like, I mean, just like we are, she's coming to hopefully, I hope she's invited, but the baby shower, you know, we'll have a baby shower next month. And, you know, I, and she loves kids too. So yes, like we would love for our little one to have Jess in her life too. And then same thing for our partner over here, as long as like, we're really building that trust to us. It's more help and more support and it's more, more love. love. I think our boundary, we realize like we probably won't get to the point of like having somebody move in with mm -hmm. us. Like we also like our privacy and alone time too, but to still have interaction and help uh, with others. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. And like you said, like you are doing what feels best for you, like in there and that that's beautiful. So I think that. I think that it's beautiful that your baby is going to grow up with so much love. Like it'll be bursting at the seams, like from every room in the house, like you, you guys are so loving. And then whoever you're friends with is loving and your family is loving. Like it's, it's just such a beautiful way to grow up and not wonder if you're appreciated or loved. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's like, you know, with anything, even with the relationship, you have boundaries, there'll probably be things that we still keep a little more private, exactly. but also we won't hide who we are when it comes to the point of she's able to ask questions or have an understanding. We'll still set those boundaries and those could be ever changing as time goes on. But I think at the end of the day, we just want her to know and be raised around non-judgmental parents and we'll support her and anything that she wants to do. And, you know, yeah, so just no judgment. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Can you share yeah. the baby's name? Do you have one picked out? Yeah, we got it. It's a Brinley Lane Bear. So Brinley Bear. Brinley Bear. <laughs> yes, I'm obsessed. So it's BLB, right? Brinley Lane Bear. Yeah, yeah. BLB. I BLB. love it. I I knew. Side note, because I listened to Zachary Reality, but I wanted to hear it again, and it's still it still yeah. hits just as beautiful. I'm obsessed. Oh, I'm obsessed. Oh, oh. Do you guys have the baby room decorated yet? Yeah, we've been building up the nursery for the last couple of months, and it's coming together so well. We've got new flooring. We got the walls painted. We just got the crib a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. We got Lauren, Mama Bear, her new rocker. So everything's, <laughs> everything's coming just together so some, well. Just like, small little touches still, but pretty much is where it needs to be just little decorations. But we still got a little bit of time. I'm yeah, so it's excited. So, it's so Can I ask Say. if it's not intrusive? Are you? Do you have like a birth plan that you guys decided on? Yeah. So funny enough. So my practicum in nursing school was actually labor and delivery. So that's what I thought I was going to do out of nursing school. I love labor and delivery so much. I love babies. Um, it was really hard to get that out of nursing school, but I did my practicum in that. So got my practice with, um, with labor and postpartum. And then I worked in the NICU. So neonatal wow. for two years. So it's funny, like going into the pregnancy, I'm thinking of like freaking worst case scenario over mm -hmm. here because of the NICU mm -hmm. like side of it. But yes, yeah, definitely birth plan. I really, I don't have anything against the hospital. I think for our first, I just want to go through the hospital. This is what I actually okay. do have my education and knowledge in. Totally. I'm okay if needed medication and things like that. But if we do at one point, you know, have another, I definitely would be interested in doing like an at home or like a, like a birthing center. Yeah. Uh, 100%. I just was like, you know, for the first one, I like the monitors. I like the numbers. I like, <laughs> it's just because that's just like the nurse, the nurse background and I hope, in me. So. I hope you don't feel like I'm asking, like, I, 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 I hate when people like mom shame. I think every birthing plan is beautiful. Like I, Me too. it's, you're Me delivering too. like a child, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing that that's not beautiful about that experience. I, I mean, whatever's going to make a woman more, more at peace and less yeah, stress. You know? Absolutely. And it, it, while it's 2024, things aren't perfect. You know what I mean? Like if you, you, if for your first experience, you want to make sure it goes perfect and you have support around. So I completely get it and it's cool yeah. that you have it i did three years of nursing school and then i stopped 
But mm-hmm. I have had this thing my whole life that I went to, I'm going to therapy for, but I pass out when I watch birth, hear about birth, yeah. read stuff. And like, yeah. you know, it, it's interesting, but I remember passing out in my nursing class when we watched like an episiotomy and like a C-section. Oh, and boy. I can't imagine thinking to myself, watching it, you know what, this is, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to be looking at this every day. Like you are such a superwoman. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think honestly, like nursing in general, there's so, it, with, with anything medical, there's all these different avenues. So if anybody is in something that I wasn't in, I tell them that that takes a special person because it's things that I'm like, uh, adults, no, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> the baby? Fine. Fine. Babies. Yeah, yes. Babies. We're good. Yes. <laughs> um, so wh- have you guys hung out with Mia? Are you guys still friends? Where do you stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've seen Mia uh, a couple of times, especially throughout the, the you know, uh, dropping of all the, the series every week. We were in Vegas um, for the first drop and we were with Mia. And then were we with her again? We saw her for the first and then for the finale. The finale. Yeah. yeah. So we haven't hung out with, I'm trying to think. There's been a couple of times, because I know like her sister and herself, like, they're big in the music, like EDM. We love music yes. festivals. So there was a couple of times where we may have crossed paths, but then we ended up not going. So it was just like the, the premiere and the finale where we've seen her. But oh yeah, we definitely have seen her and caught up. Yes. And then people were asking on Reddit, they were like, do you think they'll go to any raves together? I was like, I'll ask. <laughs> I'll find out. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we um we were supposed to go to Ultra, had to kind of call off. We had some flight issues. We'll probably just do local yeah. from here on out before Baby Bear comes. 100%. <laughs> My body, I can't stand on my feet as much as I could before. Yeah, girl, bye. You can watch from the car. They like, get your little lessons <laughs> on. Like, I would not even be able to go. So we'll do local yes. and then definitely want to go back to festivals and stuff. Since then, we've gone to festivals with Jess. We've done a few, because Jess is big into EDM and stuff, too. Yes, so, yes, yeah, is. we definitely, oh, gosh, yeah. We've seen Corey. We saw yeah, her at one. Corey, one yeah. So we always do. We see somebody. Wait, Jess cracked me up. Like, you guys were like, have you ever had sex to hardcore EDM? And she's like, definitely. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> she's like, definitely. And I was like, ooh. Okay. Yeah, let's go. It's so funny also just like seeing those little side like conversations. Like I forgot Hilarious. about that conversation yeah. to hear like what's kept in there. I'm like, oh my god, they would do that. <laughs> I'm low key, like Jess, share your playlist. Like I you know, like what it, what's on there? <laughs> I wanna know. Yeah, a little bit of what excision, millennium. Give all, it a try. Like she should just put it out there on Spotify, like the couple of yeah, yeah. my my playlist. <laughs> that's that's so good. <laughs> um so who else are you friends with from the show? That's that's my last question for you. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, we're friends with everybody from the show. Yeah. And again, like Lauren and I have said, like, we're, we just want to be friends and be there for everybody throughout the show. And there's so much variety, too, between everybody. So it was really yeah. cool to be able to meet so many different similarities but also differences you know and different dynamics so yeah, i would say you know we're ma- most close to the boys um Ashmal and Rahman and Brittany and sean we're very tight with them um we're in contact with them you know on a you know weekly basis pretty much, pretty weekly much. Basis. i yeah. feel like we talk to them a lot and then chris i feel like we always talk to chris, chris he's just yeah. such good everybody's vibes. talking about chris everyone <laughs> Amazing. He like the things they didn't show of Chris. I'm like, he needs his own show. Chris was great. And I'm like, <laughs> he was... he's hot too. So just like maybe he should come back for season two. I I think yeah. so. I think he needs more light because that that he just holds so much light to him too. He's just such good energy. We loved Chris. And I was so obsessed much. with Frank too. I I felt the same way about yeah. Frank. Like I'm like, yeah. Frank, I love you. I just loved him. Yeah. yeah. Like a gentle giant. Yes. He is just so yes. Because so he said he six seven, Frank. and I said get the fuck out. Because yeah, you should see the picture of him and I. I'm giving him a big hug, and you don't realize how big he is until you see see me next to him. I'm like, damn, boy, I love. Him. He's but he's got the you know biggest heart ever. Frank mm-hmm. is truly amazing. When he said he's scared of heights, it just like cracked me up because like how you how you <laughs> feeling up there? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. He's already so hot up there. Yo, it's so funny because after we took that picture together, he's like, damn, I didn't realize I'm actually that tall. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you actually are. <laughs> um, would you ever do another reality show? Like, I'm picturing the challenge Big Brother. 
Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. I personally, yeah, I would love to do the challenge or just something more physical and um, yeah. competition related. Yeah, like a competition related kind of show. That'd be really fun. Because yeah. like we did add so much fun in that one where that like me, Dylan, Jess won like the, the different, like the obstacle yes. course one or yeah. whatever. A blast. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I want to do more of that. Yeah. And then I also, I've been telling Lauren um, that I'm looking into Wipeout. If you know. <laughs> yes. So it's not really a reality show, but you know, it's. It's show. a fun little obstacle challenge, and um, I'm trying to get on that for sure. Stop. <laughs> I would love that. Also, American Ninja Warrior. Like, try both. Oh, yes. I can see that. Yeah. Same. That would be really A cool. little, little like, so, tour where you do all yeah. your fitness things. Where You have to wear, like, a T-shirt that has, like, the logo on it, Obvi, for your guys' yeah. gym or whatever, your company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> little promo. That would be cute. Right? Yeah. little yeah. promo there. <laughs> no, because we had such an amazing experience with, uh, you know, the, the production team and, and – um, it was just so fun. Just the show looking, in general. Looking to do something experience. else yeah. like that. Yeah. So much I'm fun. I'm so excited. You guys were so much fun to watch. Do you have anything else that you would like to share, clear the air on before we wrap? I'm trying to think. I feel like you covered everything. You asked some good yeah. questions. Okay, good. <laughs> I wanted to hit everything. Did you? Were you going to say something, Dylan? I'm sorry if I interrupted. I mean, I just I was going to touch base on Lauren. This was a really beautiful experience for me to see from Lauren's growth perspective, because throughout this experience, she has accepted that she is bisexual. Yes. And up until this point, she was very bi curious. Yes. And I think it's important that people understand that because a lot of people think that, you know, from the outside I, that we might be doing or involved in polyamory for just me because we have we, gotten that a lot. Like, well, why isn't Lauren bringing in a guy? It's like, well, I have Dylan, but I realize that I like women as well. Yes. So it's actually more so for yes, us, but me as well. Like, because I can get to experiment or not experiment, but more so step into my bisexuality more and like have these really great relationships with women. Yes. And, you know, yeah, it's beautiful for me, to see, for me to see, like she has stepped into, you know, her true sexuality of saying like, yes, I, I do actually, I am attracted to women yes. and uh, I'm just like, fuck yeah, you own that girl. Yes. So it's, it's really, <laughs> I like that you don't like try to control that and you, and you do give her space to pursue yeah. that because yeah. it, it's, it's hard yeah. when you, sorry, go ahead. No, it's important to, you know, give your significant others that space. Um, and that's truly what has allowed us to grow even closer together. Absolutely, because you trust Lauren, but you and you also don't want Lauren to like suppress any piece of herself. Like it's all of Lauren that you love, so that includes, yeah. you know, acknowledging, honoring, and leaving space for her sexuality. I'm really glad you shared that, and it was empowering that I want to say Brittany shared the same experience. Like she was able yeah. to yeah. say by the end of yeah. the show, you know, I am bisexual. That was the most beautiful thing to watch. There's actually some parts there for just like, like the emotion during those times, whether it was at that ta the kitchen table or the other time she was having that conversation. There was just like a lot of emotion. At, this was at the very end of everything too, but to like see everybody's growth, especially Brittany's was one of my, and I think that's why we're probably so close to her and Sean because their growth was one of the most special to watch throughout that whole entire thing. I absolutely agree. And it's just been so nice to touch base with everybody from the cast and like hear different things about people that we didn't get to see on the show. And everybody's just said such nice things about you. And now I see why you both are so endearing. <laughs> well, thank you so much. No, we're, we're all about, you know, spreading more love and, um, that's, we just appreciate the opportunity for hopping on here and to, you know, share our personal perspective on, more love. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for making time. If you would like to, you can plug your Instagram handles one more time. And if not, I'm going to cut this and I'll just put it in the link in bio. So either one. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Dylan bear underscore RD. And then you can find me fitness first underscore IFBB pro. Hey, give them a follow. <laughs> Say if you listen to the episode, tell them what your favorite part was, send some congratulatory yeah. love. No, 